we're finally seeing big data and data analytics as being discussed a lot uh, by marketers, but I'm not sure that a lot of marketers are actually practicing this, especially with small and medium-sized businesses. And so what advice could you give to them as far as what they can actually do in practice as far as analytics? You know, I, I'm not sure that the small and, and mid-sized businesses are not doing analytics. What, what, curiously enough, I have found a lot of startups. We look at, we sometimes talk to, you know, startups and, and, and they sometimes have a better grasp of what's going on with their businesses, even than, than large companies. And, and, so, and, why, so, and why so? I, I think it's, it's because, it, first of all, they, they were born in, a, in an era where, where this was the norm. You know, when you think of, there's a lot of legacy in big companies. And, and we have, obviously, very good systems, you know, at PepsiCo in terms of tracking sales and tracking consumption. <laughs> Um, but there's also some legacy around it. When you think of a, of a startup company, uh, most of them have, you know, we're born in an era where, you know, data has been available and it's a native thing within, within what they do. So I, I agree with you that some of the small ones don't do it, but the successful ones do. Uh, and, um, and that's important. So for, for us in a way, and I think for big companies, more of a catch up in a way than, than anything else. Now, once you, once you are able, to have this data, it's very transformative because obviously when you're a large company, you can do so many things. So some of the things that we have been able to do is increase our, our, our effectiveness of, of both marketing spend and on conversion of consumption in, in dramatic ways. Um, and you know we're optimizing now our media spend in, in ways. We're doing a lot of geolocation marketing, for example, um, what I like to call micro-segmentation in, in the sense that, you know, if, um, for example, have, I'm advertising for the, um, you know, Champions League, which is we're a sponsor of the Champions League soccer event, you know, I can go and talk to people that are Champions League fans or specific teams, and I can do that for, um, you know, brand Pepsi in a, an, an allocation right before the game. And I could do it for a soccer practitioner for Gatorade uh, right after they finish their practice. So these are the type of things that once you have access to that data, you're able to do and, and do it in a much more successful way because the effectiveness is way higher, three, four times higher than just going and buying a, a, a TV ad because you're doing it in the right moment with the right people. So that's, that's how we're using it. And again, I think that small companies, um, you know, kudos to them because I have seen a couple of them doing incredible work in, in this space. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of times they're, if they, uh, they get the data, but then they sometimes don't use the data. And I think that's the catch right yeah. there for them. I, I see a lot of people who, who have collected a lot, but they haven't used it. And I could imagine even at large companies, and you talk with a lot of your colleagues at the, a lot of the, a lot of your colleagues at the, a lot of the other large companies. And I would imagine that there's sometimes a, a difficulty in moving a large ship and making it turn versus a smaller ship. Correct. Absolutely. It's, it's much easier for a, for a nimble company to do these, these changes and, and, and adapt. We tend to keep most of our brands with an entrepreneurial flair in a way, even within the large construct of what PepsiCo is, is a, you know, second largest food and beverage company in the world. It's, it's large, but how do we make sure that our teams are, are managing with a, an entrepreneurial spirit, being it from a regional perspective, from a brand perspective, and, and that, that helps. So it's really the layering between the distribution, which yes, it's pretty much across all brands, but how you're conceptualizing a brand like Quaker, we want to make sure that it's very different than when you're doing that for, for Pepsi. You know, Quaker, it's, it's a health center brand. Um, so there are some principles there you want to make sure that you're ring fencing and then one is not going on top of the other. Even with Gatorade, you know, Gatorade, you say, well, it's, it's a beverage. It's, it's really not. It's, it's about sports nutrition. It's about, you know, athletic performance. So we try to keep um, the, the mental state of the people that are working in the brand very separate than from brand Pepsi. So that's, that's something that we think it's important to, to remain nimble and trying to make those things happen. 